In this video, I'm going to explain our radiant floor heating installation on one of our current projects. If you want to know more about radiant and floor heating, you can check out this previous video that we did earlier this year. I'm Casey Gray, the founder of The Conscious Builder, and on this channel, we help you build and live more consciously. If you're new here, go ahead and click that subscribe button, and don't forget to check out the links in the description below. We have some exciting news for those people who are looking for Passive House and Net Zero Designs. We recently partnered with Passive Design Solutions and they have completed over 100 Passive House projects in cold climates. They can save you the time and costs for architectural design by selecting one of their ready to build Passive House plans. They have house plans ranging in size from 500 square feet to 3,500 square feet, and they offer different orientation options as well. If you're interested, be sure to check out the link in the video description below and take advantage of the Conscious Builder discount. Now, back to the video. This two-story slab-on-grade home is just under 3,000 square feet. The original heating system was a condensing natural gas boiler, which distributed the heat to the baseboard heaters. Now this project involves modifying some of the floor plan, designing a new kitchen with a pantry and an additional main floor bathroom. It's a unique house sitting on the top of a hill with a really nice view towards downtown Ottawa. It's got an extremely narrow backyard though, but it has no rear neighbors and gives you that courtyard feel. It also does not have a basement. After the demo was completed, we realized the concrete floor was really uneven, so we had to pour some concrete in some areas in order to prep for the insulation installation. In this case, we use six millimeter poly, but 10 millimeter is more common in the basement where radon is a concern or where there's a possibility of it being punctured. The team cut seams in the six millimeter for the stud walls so we could continue our air barrier and sealed it with Proclima's Compego tape. We used two layers of four inch expanded polystyrene, EPS for short, on top of the poly, which gave us a total of R24. And we cut strips for the interior walls and a strip to wrap around the exterior walls to eliminate thermal bridging. With the installation in place, we were now ready for the radiant tube installation. One thing you need to keep in mind when doing a hydronic heating system like this is that the tubes don't work like an electric mat would. The water will lose heat as it travels through the tube. It does a loop and it loses the heat before it comes back. That means you need to put thought into how you're going to run the tubes to minimize the temperature differences in the floor. The floor will obviously be warm everywhere, but some areas may be cooler than others. After the tubes were all laid out, we had a contractor come in and do a gypsum overpour, which is essentially self-leveling, so you end up with a nice, smooth finish for your floor. Glad you tuned in until the end. If you missed last week's video on climate resilience with solar panels, you can watch it here. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell button so you get notifications when a new video is released. Be sure to check out the links in the video description below, as well as take advantage of all of the opportunities we have, like discounts on Mizuma Go uh, if you're a business owner, uh, discounts on passive house designs, and also at the Conscious Builder Academy. Until next time, I'm Casey Gray, and remember to live consciously.